One of the most fascinating things in archaeology has to be the disappearance of mass amounts of people, leaving behind their artwork, artifacts, and architecture, and questions about who they were and why they left their homes and cities behind. Seeing as we don't have the technology to fly around the world in 10 minutes yet, uh, we're going to share these incredible places with you through the power of the World Wide Web. And we're starting off the list with a pretty amazing civilization, the Indus. They existed from around 3300 BCE to 1300 BCE in what is now Pakistan and Northwest India. It's often called one of the world's oldest civilizations, but they were pretty advanced. They had sanitation systems that wouldn't be matched until the Roman times, which is pretty crazy. They had busy cities with well-planned streets, houses, and even indoor bathrooms, apparently. Two major cities, Harappa and Mohenjo-Daro, are probably the most well-known. These cities had intricate brickwork, drainage systems, and there's evidence of a written script that we haven't even been able to fully decipher to this day. These folks were not just good at city building, they were also savvy traders. The Indus people traded with Mesopotamia, using boats to transport goods. Agriculture was a big deal too, with well irrigated fields for growing crops. But around 1300 BCE, the civilization started to fall off. We're not entirely sure why. Some think it could be due to climate change affecting their water sources, so people up and left migrating southeast. Today, all that's left of the ancient city of Angkor in Cambodia is Angkor Wat, this beautiful temple complex, which also happens to be the largest religious structure in the entire world. Yeah, it's pretty remarkable. And as large as it is, it's still only just one part of a city that used to be larger than modern day New York City. Angkor, the capital of the Khmer Empire. This place had magnificent temples, including Angkor Angkor Wat, so you can only imagine how many more amazing structures there were considering how vast this place was. But around the 15th century, the city declined and was eventually abandoned. There may have been environmental stress here. The complex irrigation system may have strained resources, causing soil depletion and impacting food production. There could have also been prolonged droughts that affected their ability to support a large population. Researchers aren't exactly sure how many people lived there, of course, but considering the size, there were probably a lot. And there were also power struggles and invasions, which weakens the Khmer Empire, eventually leading to the decline of their largest city, followed by the empire itself about 300 years later. This next civilization was also pretty incredible, but things didn't end quite as uh, smoothly for them as the first point on this list. Rather than people just moving and settling somewhere else because of issues with agriculture, it looks like things ended pretty violently for the Anasazi. The Anasazi the Anasazi were an ancient Native American people who lived in the Four Corners region of the United States, where Colorado, Utah, Arizona, and New Mexico meet. They were skilled builders, creating these impressive homes that were carved into the sides of cliffs. These dwellings were kind of like the skyscrapers of their time. They towered over everything else in the region until the 1880s when actual skyscrapers came into play. But for as advanced as they were, things did not end well. Well, the theory is that they were dealing with a long-term drought and deforestation was happening too. They were using up a lot of wood, probably for building and cooking, add water management issues to the mix, and it's easy to see why things started to fall apart. Tensions rose due to desperation, and that's what likely led to violent conflicts and by around 1300 AD, the Anasazi had mostly dispersed. Next on the list, we have the Rapa Nui civilization on Easter Island. This is the island with all those amazing stone statues known as Moe. The fact that they were able to carve these things out of volcanoes and then transport the 14 ton behemoths around the island is a pretty incredible feat. For a long time, it was a complete mystery as to how they actually did it, but it turns out they would have used a system of ropes with a team pulling the statues back and forth, making the Moe kind of like walk. It's pretty cool. So what went wrong with the Rapa Nui? Well, scientists dug into the dirt, looking at ancient charcoal pieces and pollen in the soil, found that the Rapa Nui had chopped down almost every tree on the island. 
Then rats on the island were eating the tree seeds before new trees could grow. So the forest was completely wiped out. Without trees, the people lost their ability to make rope and canoes, and apparently they started burning grass to make fire. This was all pretty bad, and you can bet tensions were high, and things would have gotten even worse when Europeans showed up in 1722. The first Europeans to set foot on Easter Island, you know, they did their thing. They didn't come in peace. It's about as classic as it gets, unfortunately. And if that wasn't enough, by the 1870s, waves of smallpox and a major Peruvian slave raid hit the Rapa Nui, and these were the last nails in the coffin for the already small population on the island. Next up are the Mississippians. The Mississippians were a group of Native American societies that thrived in the southeastern United States from around 800 to 1600 AD. They were known for building these complex societies with impressive mounds, and Cahokia was one of their biggest and most impressive cities. This place, located near present-day St. Louis, Missouri, was the largest pre-Columbian settlement north of Mexico. At its peak, it had a population of around 20,000 people, possibly even double that. It had enormous earthen mounds, including the famous Monk's Mound, which is still one of the largest man-made earthen mounds in North America. But it eventually fell. Around the late 13th century, the population began to dwindle. And by the 14th century, the city was largely abandoned. Nature slowly reclaimed the area. It's not very clear what led to the decline. There aren't explicit records from that time time, but it was probably a combination of things, environmental and economic. Next on the list are the people of the Nabta Playa. So Nabta Playa is a dry lake bed located in the Nubian desert of southern Egypt. It has these archaeological remains dating back to around 10,000 to 6,000 years ago during the Neolithic period. The people who once lived here left behind evidence of their advanced understanding of astronomy and agriculture. They erected a stone circle, kind of similar to the Stonehenge in England, which seems to be what they used to map the stars. Some archaeologists think these stone formations worked as an ancient kind of calendar, but other than the stone circles they left behind, we really don't know a whole lot about the people of Nabta Playa. Archaeologists and historians are still trying to piece together their daily lives, social structures, and what ultimately happened to them. The site seems to have been abandoned around 5,000 years ago, but the lack of written records from that time period, it makes it tough to pinpoint the exact reasons behind their disappearance. We, next up, we have Chatel Hayuk. Chatel Hayuk in central Turkey is not only one of the first known urban settlements in the world, but also one of the strangest. So instead of streets like you have with most cities, I mean, every city, here, all the homes and buildings were connected. And to get around, people walked along the paths on roofs and then descended down into their homes with ladders. Looking at images of the place, it looks almost like a, a big ginormous honeycomb type of formation. It's very unique. There aren't really any places like it. There were also no cemeteries. Residents buried their dead underneath their own homes. The fate of its inhabitants is still mysterious, which isn't surprising considering how ancient it is. But around 6700 BCE, the site was abandoned, and researchers are still piecing together the reasons behind it. The ancient city of Thonis, which now sits at the bottom of the Mediterranean Sea. I love ancient underwater cities. There's just something so beautiful but eerie about them at the same time. So Thonis was an Egyptian city located near the mouth of the Nile River. It was one of the most important port cities in ancient Egypt, a thriving port city during the time of the pharaohs, a center for trade with Greece and other Mediterranean countries, and it played a big role in the Egyptian economy. The city had these grand temples and statues dedicated to the various gods and goddesses of ancient Egypt, but then it sank. There were probably natural disasters like earthquakes and, of course, the sea levels rose. And for centuries, this place was lost and forgotten until underwater archaeologists discovered its ruins in 2000, with divers finding well-preserved artifacts like statues, pottery, and religious objects. 
All right, we gotta talk about it. The Lost City of Atlantis. Atlantis was a legendary city, first mentioned by the ancient Greek philosopher Plato. And according to Plato, Atlantis was this powerful and advanced civilization that existed around 9,000 years before his own time. So that's about 11,000 years ago from today. But it's still a complete mystery as to whether or not this place really did exist. A lot of uppity scientists say it didn't, but they also sound very not fun. It's said that Atlantis had a sophisticated government, advanced technology, and a prosperous economy. The Atlanteans were described as this powerful, warlike people who eventually became corrupt and decadent, leading the gods to punish them by submerging their island beneath the sea in a single day and night. The exact location of Atlantis is still unknown, and there are a lot of archaeologists that figure Atlantis the whole story behind it was really just a legend and an allegory rather than an actual place. Some of the rumored locations, though, range from the Mediterranean to Antarctica, but there's never been any definitive physical evidence of its existence. And finally, of course, we have the Maya, who created some of the most incredible architecture and artwork of any known ancient civilization. And not only were their cities and artwork spectacular, but their knowledge about astronomy was unparalleled for the time. But around the 9th and 10th centuries, their cities, which once bustled with life, started to empty out, and that's always been a mystery as to why. It's hard to pinpoint an exact cause, because parts of the civilization fell at various times. It was a wide-stretching civilization with various languages and practices across the board, but there are some ideas as to what happened. Environmental stress, is usually a big factor. Could have been droughts or crop failures. Another thing could be overpopulation. Resources could have started running thin, and when there's overpopulation, uh, there's more violence. Not a great recipe for a peaceful society. There might have been some political problems as well, with rulers losing control, causing internal conflicts. But with all of that said, I've been your host, James, and I will catch you, yes, you specifically, in the next video.